So hello. Let's talk about 3D printing and ecosystem design. And oh, sorry. <laughs> and to start, I'd like to take you back to 1996. At that time, Bill Clinton and Dole were fighting for the presidency in the United States. Gates and Jobs were discussing how to solve each other. And I was working at the Boeing plant in Seattle and talking to scientists of the MIT and Sandia Lab about 3D printing. Because at that time, those guys, they invented a kind of system based on layered manufacturing. And when I saw the system, I thought by myself, oh my god, if you can produce parts just by sending some liquid metal through a nozzle and then print it layer by layer, this would change the ent entire manufacturing industry. And why would it change the uh, manufacturing industry? Because of the fact that it's that mind-blowing that people are just thinking, Mario, you're disruptive. The technology is disruptive. People, they start to believe that this kind of manufacturing system will change the world. So at that time, I, I said, OK, let's talk to some business owners and ask them what they think about 3D printing. And the first uh, sentence I got was a guy who said okay, to me, Mario, if you can print parts without turning, milling, and all that kind of, uh, that kind of stuff, you will disrupt my business. You will end consuming. You will make uh, consumers manufacturers. So you will, in fact, change the paradigm. And this is not what we need back in 1996. So I thought by myself, OK, if it's not possible to do it in the States, then I have to end my project at Boeing, and I have to return. So I returned to Belgium, huh? back home, uh, back to our lovely country, Belgium, where the north and the south live in perfect harmony, where, where I have all my friends, where we have Arno, where we have Toots Tielemans, Gilbert Bonen, all the guys that make us happy every day, and my, and my family. And so I looked for a company that enabled me to build and to realize my dream, building a first digital factory. So where we could, in fact, uh, upscale the technology and make an ecosystem based on, on additive manufacturing. And what's uh, direct digital manufacturing? It's in fact a manufacturing system where we start from data, and from the data on, we will go via print, print technology and metals to a final part. And in fact, it's a little bit what happens in, in nature. Huh? If we get with, with our customers around the table and we talk to them about manufacturing, then we say, okay, let's reinvent the manufacturing system for your part. Huh? Let's try to make uh, products by using sustainable technologies. Let's print them, let's change your, your paradigm and make all these kind of beautiful products. But if you talk to engineers, engineers, they will ask you, yes, Mario, huh? printing metals, so what? Is it hard? Is it, is it sustainable? Can we use it in machines? Huh? And the, the answer I give them all the time is, just take it in your mouth and bite on it. So if they bite on it, uh, you see how they end up uh, without teeth. So I can sell them a prosthesis. Uh, and that's the way that we built our business. Uh, a salesman or an, or an entrepreneur, he creates his own market. So we just learned it from the, the two funny guys uh, before me. And how we do it today, making prosthesis. So we simply scan a customer in the morning. So the topography of his, uh, of his teeth. We send it over to one of the art stations of Bolot at the dental office. These guys, they make, it, they make the prosthesis by doing this with a kind of haptic device. So they design it. They send it over to Molot. We all take the data inside the machines. We laser print them layer by layer. After about 10 hours, we have 35 to 50 prostheses ready. We finish them. Overnight, we ship them back to the dentist. They finish it as a dental prosthesis, and they bring it to the customer. So this kind of manufacturing uh, procedure allows us now to produce parts locally in Belgium without having the problem of competition and having the globalized uh, environment. So the digital process is in fact based on near shore manufacturing. So in fact, around Melot, we've created our own little ecosystem. So just uh, to be, to be uh, frank on this, Melot is a small company, only 50 people. But still in the dental field, we developed an, an ecosystem allowing us to interact with 96 engineers, so working in the dental offices. 
and all those guys are sending us this kind of data and we produce without having physical transport of the objects and all the different steps that we have. And we asked our friend Serge de Gelder, who is one of the organizing uh, members here, to make a uh, life cycle analysis of this. Right? So what's the impact now of having this kind of system uh, up and running compared to the analog manufacturing method? So, and we found out that the impact, the environmental impact of this technology is a reduction of factor eight, right? which is quite important knowing that only by 2020 uh, we should define a strategic agenda to get onto factor 20 at the end of 2050, so which is still ahead. But if you see now only on the, on the transportation, we have in fact 18, factor 18 less transport on the road. So if you consider tomorrow the Brussels ring uh, and you take uh, 95 out of 100 lorries of the road, then it might be that we have fluent uh, traffic again. So this might be, uh, have a big impact. But another big impact is energy. So at Malot we save 67 households of energy only with 50 people in the factory and we reduce uh, 163 tons of, of carbon which is an equivalent of 54 car So that means that the entire company is in fact neutralized. So, but it's not only about technology or something, uh, about the technology or, or uh, making parts, but it's as well about supporting our society and supporting the land where we live, uh, Belgium. Because you know that if we produce locally, we, we, we create our added value locally as well. And 50% of our added value is uh, reported with, uh, with taxes, and these taxes we use to invest in schools, in our healthcare, and in our social uh, infrastructure. So this is very important to see this as well. So, and if you now take all this kind of uh, developments and you make an, an international network of digital factories where you allow people to manufacture parts within their own culture, within their own local ecosystem, with around them a, a big number of local manufacturing companies, then we create a new kind of manufacturing paradigm that allows us, in fact, to, pre to create products with a very low impact. And having uh, a lot of people at work here locally and as well in the other uh, ecosystems. So I don't know what 2015 uh, would look like. I think I will uh, work hard to, make, to, to realize it and to expand uh, the network and I'm happy to do it uh, from here, Flanders, Belgium. Thank you very much.